I wanted to be a diver almost before I could walk. So I worked hard and I played hard and I jumped hard and managed to bring home 47 national titles, five world championships and five Olympic diving medals. Hi, I'm Greg Luganis, and I know what it's like to win the gold, then have to live up to it. And believe me, all that's gold doesn't always glitter. Let's check out the second act of another gold medal Olympian, a guy who knows you can get on with your life no matter how high you were when you fell. The 1984 Olympic Games, top athletes from around the world converged in Los Angeles, a town already known for making dreams come true. For the United States men's gymnastic team, it was a year unparalleled in history. The team dazzled the competition and took the gold, beating the Japanese and the Chinese, the anticipated leaders. The six young men became instant American heroes. Remarkably, one member of the team hadn't even begun seriously training until high school. Right from the start, Mitch Gaylord showed the remarkable promise that would turn him into a hero, a poster boy and an invincible innovator in a very demanding sport. Here comes the Gaylord 2. He catches, which makes it difficult, in an undergrip. At the 1984 Olympic Games, Mitch Gaylord did what no other American gymnast had ever done before. He became the first to score a perfect 10. To add to his men's team gold medal, Mitch captured three individual medals as well a silver and two bronze. Mitch Gaylord. Handsome and personable, with all the potential opportunities of an Olympic champion before him, Mitch Gaylord appeared to be on top of the world. It was an amazing experience to be part of the 84 team. I remember this specific moment when we walked out there and our coach, J.B. Grossfield, kind of as a, a joke, said, you guys, don't worry, there's really no pressure. There's only 2.2 billion people watching you right now. I was in first place in the all-around, which I'd never, ever imagined. And then we went to our best event, my best event, which is high bar. I'm last up. I'm expected to win a medal on high bar. I could have done this routine in my sleep, and I went up there, and I made a mistake on the simplest trick on the entire routine. That was tough. That was really tough. Automatic five-tenth deduction blew me out of high bar and the all-around in one split moment of lack of focus. When we won the gold medal, we're standing on the victory stand, the flag's going up, the moment we all have dreamt of all of our lives. You know, it's the fantasy. It's, it's reality now. Uh, I thought I'd be bawling. I thought I'd be crying like a little baby up there from emotion. Something was missing, and I didn't know what it was. And if you told me before the Olympics that, hey, Mitch, you're going to win a gold, a silver, and two bronze medals after these games, are you going to be, are you going to feel happy? I would have been, like, ecstatic. And yet, that's what I got, and I didn't feel that way. I didn't feel deserving of it at the time, and that's just an amazing thing for me to understand now, that because I didn't live up to my own expectations, I didn't feel like I could portray myself as a hero out there. Even though everyone else accepted me that way, I didn't accept myself that way. It was, you know, traced right back to the high bar thing. That was it. I mean, that was the simplest move, and I, I just didn't forgive myself for making that mistake. I felt like I had this one great gift, this talent in sports, and it was over. That's what I felt like. So where, what am I going to do now? Uncomfortable and unable to accept himself as a sports hero, Mitch searched for an alternative to the usual offers of TV commentating and product endorsements. Instead, he chose to answer the call of Hollywood and take the lead in a major motion picture that centered around gymnastics, American Anthem. I didn't want to go into commentating. I didn't want to do endorsements and smile and say, hi, here I am. It wasn't in me. It wasn't in me. And the movie offered me a different path. This was going to be a big movie. It's a big director, high hopes, high expectations. They were all saying I was going to be the next Tom Cruise. Those were the exact words of all these people. They were seeing dailies every day of all the footage we were shooting. And I honestly believed that these people knew what they were talking about. It was going to be huge. And I was going to be a big movie star and be this great actor. It was pulled from the theaters after two weeks. It bombed. It totally bombed. As much as I had hoped this was going to give me a whole new direction, in one night, 
I mean, it was over as far as I was concerned. That was it, and I, I was devastated. I coped with it by numbing myself to it, which was pretty much the start of some heavy partying. I felt like a loser. But I'd be out drinking every night, womanizing. I was definitely on a, on a downward spiral. I was lost. And this whole thing came to a head with a very, very serious incident that happened with the girl that I was seeing at the time who uh, tried to take her own life. I got there. And the cops are looking at me like I did this to this person. I mean, you should have seen me. I had long hair at the time, I, you know, bags under the eyes, the whole thing. I looked like, you know, a drug addict is what I looked like. And they said, do you have any ID? Who are you? Are you the boyfriend? I'm like, yeah, you know, and I show him the ID. He looks at the ID, Mitch Gaylord, he, like, does the double take, you know, you're the, Olymp you're the Olympic guy. And I was like, yeah, you know. It's like, well, what are you doing in this mess, you know, and, and those words, what are you doing in this mess? Like, hit me like a ton of bricks. By then, Mitch had lost all his money and despite the Olympic past, found himself struggling and oftentimes rejected for work. I definitely was in that place of, uh, almost at the place of no hope. And it's just amazing to me. It's just amazing. I had everything, you know, and then you start learning that, hey, other people like, you know, the John Belushi's in the world, Elvis, you know, these people who, who, you, who you think have everything, you know? And they've got, they don't have themselves, so they've got nothing inside, and they're able to do that to themselves. And I started to understand it, you know? And that's a scary thing right there, to understand what these kind of people have, must have gone through. And I knew I didn't want to go down that road. Today, Mitch has redefined for himself what it means to be a success. I'm looking to do things that people probably would have expected me to do after the Olympics, like go into commentating, go into broadcasting. He's also writing a book about his experiences and is touring as a motivational speaker. I got a question for you guys. How long do you think I could stay in this position right here? I have something to share with people from what I've been through. And these are, these are universal things that we've all gone through in our life. I'm only 35 now, but I've experienced so much because of the heights at such a young age. And I feel like I, I have something to share with people. The person who's given him the most strength has been his wife, Deborah. When Mitch and I got together, he was definitely at the low point. I missed all the highs after the Olympics and the movie and, you know, all the things, all the great things that happened to him after the Olympics. I missed all that. That's why I know Deborah loved me for me. It wasn't for the money or the fame or any of that other stuff. She had never seen the Olympics. She didn't know anything about my gymnastics past. She knew I was losing all my money, and we moved in together. It was like the start of a, of a whole new life. Thank you. I'm going to give you big kiss. Mommy, did you bring Kleenex? Yes, here we go. Excellent. <laughs> I mean, I'm a father now. You know, I still feel like a kid in many ways, and like I'm a dad. Maybe it is in the jeans a little bit. I've got these two kids looking up to me, and it, it's an amazing feeling. Very special. You could do all the Olympic stuff you want, but until you have a loving relationship and beautiful kids and that feeling of closeness, nothing compares to that. Like Mitch, my life has also presented me with challenges I never anticipated. I know a whole lot of people were shocked when I made this announcement. My name is Craig Luganus. I'm gay and I'm HIV positive. I feel fine right now. I cherish the support and encouragement I've received from friends and well-wishers. That's been most important. On the career front, I'm continuing with my acting, and they tell me I'm a best-selling author. I guess the best way to look at it is I'm ready to dive into the future and see what it holds.